Hello students and welcome to Biology 2, Chapter 4, Genetic Inheritance. So here are the contents. Right, so who is the father of genetic inheritance? Okay. This is Virgo Mandel. He is an Austrian monk who conducted hybridization experiments in Garden Peas or Prism Cerebrum. So he did his experiment on 5,000 pea plants in 1856 to 1863. Okay, so um, it is in the 19th century, uh, like 200 years ago. So as you can see in this comic, uh, Gregor Mandel was born in the Austrian Empire in 1822. He loved gardening, beekeeping, and science. When he turned 21, he became an Augustinian monk. Mandel and his bros like cultivating plants. Being a man of science, he wondered how plants looked like their parents. In 1857, Mandel set out an experiment. He bred pea plants to see how they inherited their looks. Pea plants were great for Mandel because they came in two colors and they were tasty. He cross-pollinated purple and white flower pea plants. Mandel found that these laws apply to all of the pea traits. So these are the basics of modern genetics. Mandel published a paper called Experiments on Plant Hybridization. But fortunately, his papers were burned after he died. Instead of a big argument he got, into about Texas. But in the 1900s, his work was replicated and rediscovered. So here is the location where he has done his experiments. It is a monastery where he worked in. So, Mandel crossed common pea plants and the results are not a blend. So they are either uh, white flowers or purple flowers. They are not intermediate. And over many generations, there are actually many, many traits that show up without any blending of the parent characteristics. So among all of these uh, characteristics, you can find the flower color. Flower color can only be shown in two forms, either purple or white. And not just the flower color, but also many, many other, many, many other characteristics. All can be found in one of the two forms. Okay, flower position as a terminal, stem length, long or short, seed shape, round or wrinkle, seed color, yellow, green, pot shape, infrared position. And lastly, port color, yellow or green. From this experiment, he induced two generalizations which later became the Mendel's principle of heredity or Mendelian inheritance. So, generalizations, you can find law of separation, law of different assortment. So, definition LS of a gene separate during gamete production. So, segregation means separation. So, you have two genes during the gamete production, these two will separate. So what will separate is the gene that carries a certain uh, genetic information. So the thing is, um, any um, animal or any plants um, that are created from sexual reproduction, they inherit two chromosomes, one from each parent. So like you, you have the gene from your father and your mother. So there you have two genes. But when you are creating your own gametes, these two genes are separated. So the second law of Mendel, the law of independent assortment. So if there is a lot of genes which are different, so the allele will assort independently of one another. So one gene's uh, trait or inheritance do not influence the inheritance of the other traits. In, in this example, you can see that this uh, A and B, A has two alleles, A1 and A, B, uh, A1 and B, A2. In this example, you can see that there is examples of A and B. These are two alleles. Okay, right. Um, this locus A has alleles A1 and A2. Locus B has B1 and B2. Okay. So there are actually four combinations that can happen: A1 B1 and A2 B2, or A1 B2 and A2 B1. What does this prove? It proves that these uh, combinations show you that the genes can assort independently. So, the first type of inheritance will be the monohybrid inheritance. So, it is involving one pair of contrasting characteristics. So, you have dominant and recessive. Dominant will always have its effect even in heterozygous condition. Meaning that if you have LLs which are one dominant, the other recessive, it can still produce that effect. Recessive can only produce its effect when it is Pair, okay, homozygous condition. You can see in this picture, white flowers versus red flowers. Okay, mm -hmm. and so 
white flower and red flowers they you know they cross together and the offspring that results will be the red flowers what does this mean it means that red color is the dominant gene so in in the third generation after these red colors the red color flower they cross together what will happen is that you will find out that there will be three which is red and one which is white so in the F2 generation, you can find out that there is a certain ratio, 3 to 1, okay, of dominant to recessive phenotype. So you have 3 reds and 1 white. Okay. And also, in the second generation, or F1, um, all of these red flowers are actually heterozygous. They all have 1 red gene and 1 white gene. So now we move to the hybrid inheritance. These are inheritance which are leading to two characteristics. Okay. So in this example, you can see Harry Manus Gini. Okay. Uh, so it's obvious what is this uh, uh, drawings related to. You know, it's uh, it's kind of inspired by Harry Potter. Okay. So um, Harry will have green eyes and black hair, and Ginny will have red hair and brown eyes. So when they are married together, how many offspring that they will have and what are the characteristics? So if you have, um, you know, look at Harry, right? Um, he has black hair, green eyes. These are two characteristics which are different. Okay. So the gametes will be either big B, uh, big B, small H or small B, small H. Okay. What about Ginny? Okay, she has red hair and brown eyes. So her LS will be... Um, a small b big h or uh, no okay because because her hair is uh, red hair it is a recessive color so it is small b okay small b and then you have big h small h what will happen you will have a phenotype which is like this okay half of the um, offspring will have red hair and the other half will have black hair and it's possibly half of these black hairs would have brown eyes and the other half would have green eyes what about the red one okay the red would have also half of them would have green eyes and the other half would have brown eyes okay so that's the phenotypes all of this you can see that um the the color of the hair and the color of the eyes do not exactly link together okay if you look at the mother and father the father has black hair green eyes but you can also see in the offspring uh, brown eyes and black hair meaning that the ls for brown colored eyes and black colored hair do not link they are independently assorted okay. same goes with the red color okay. the mother has red colored hair and green colored eyes but the offspring only half of it half of them will be exactly the same as the mom meaning that the ll for red colored hair and green colored eyes are independent so here is the table now we move to multiple alleles multiple alleles means that there are three or more forms of a gene for a trait so usually a population or species of organisms typically includes multiple alleles at each locus among various individuals so how can you see this different variation between these people who have this certain allele you look at the number of LL or polymorphism okay this will show you how many variations are there or we can see how many types of heterozygotes in the population so you can see here on the left this is the case of the rabbit fur you have the wild type fur which is top left and then uh, you have the chinchilla which is top right and then down there you have the uh, you have the uh, Siamese okay a little bit Siamese uh, looking okay we call it also the Himalayan okay this is black only in the in the cold areas of the body but white on the other part of the body and lastly albino okay so meaning that for the fur color there is actually more than one or two alleles that exist. And on the right picture, you can see that this is the 
ABO blood therapy in humans. So humans actually have um, blood type A, blood type B, blood type A, B, and O. So means that for the LL that controls the blood type, there's actually four, four sorry, four phenotypes, and there are three LL, more than more than two actually. The next will be epistasis. Epistasis means that you have you know, many genes, more than one genes, are involved in producing a particular trait. And one gene expression may be modified by other genes. Okay, as you can see on top, this is the comb shape of the, of the chicken. Okay, if all recessive, you have the single. And if you have the P dominant, you have the P shape. If you have dominant in the R, but recessive in the P, you have rows. If you have dominant in both, you have walnut shape. So, other than that, if you look at this picture um, on the bottom, okay, humans with red hair and yellow hair, okay, blonde hair. Okay, you have gene for red and gene for blonde. Okay, but what if you have another gene that controls the expression of these genes, red and blonde? Okay, which is the gene of the gene of having hair in the first place. Okay. Okay, it is gene for baldness. So if you have the gene for baldness, you won't be able to express any of these two colors, blonde or red. It doesn't happen because the gene for baldness control the other two genes. So when you are bald, nobody knows whether you are supposed to have blonde hair or red hair. Co-dominant allele. These are the two alleles in the gene pair in heterozygous code that are both fully expressed. So meaning that in terms of the phenotype, both variations are existing in the same same organism. So neither of them becoming a dominant or recessive to one another. For example, in humans, you have blood type system A, B, and O. A and B are actually co-dominant. Both of them are dominant against O. O is recessive. So when you have somebody having uh, O blood type from the mom and B blood type from the dad, he will get B because O is recessive. So it goes with A. But if you inherited uh, both A and B blood type from both of your parents, you don't just have A or B. Okay, B and A are actually both dominant. So you will have AB blood. You complete dominant allele. So it means that one allele for specific trait is not completely dominant over the other allele. So meaning that um, it's supposed to be dominant, but it doesn't actually um, kind of like hide the recessive. Usually when you, when you have a, a gene which are dominant, it will mask the recessive. The recessive will not be shown. Sure. For example, a pea plant which is um, a yellow color, yellow is dominant to green. So it will be yellow, even though it has the gene for green. But here in inflow dominance, the Dominant is not that powerful, so it will have traces of uh, the recessive on it. Okay, so you have a combined phenotype. So here is the snapdragon. It is a flower that can exist in three variations. One is the red flower, one is the white flower. If red and white both are crossed together, what we'll get is a flower which is pink. Okay, meaning that the red gene. Okay, the big R is not um, powerful enough to suppress the effect of the white gene or small r. In the F1 generation of this cross, every flower will be pink. But what if we uh, cross the pinks together? So all pink flowers of Snapdragon would have one big R, red, and one small r, white. So they have one white and one red gene. So if we cross them together, we'll have one red, two pinks, and one white. So if we correspond to the red and white dragon plants, the dominant allele that produces the red color is not completely dominant over this allele that produces the white color. So our spring will be pink. So here is a picture of a snapdragon without its, uh, its petals. If the petals have gone down, it is usually because of the uh, the fruiting or the fertilization have already happening so amazingly 
the Snapdragon, after it loses all its battles, it looks like a human skull. Here, we will see it is another type of flower. It is the um, naked soldier flower. Okay. So, it is actually an orchid. But the thing is, um, unlike other orchids, it has um, a long appendage that comes out of it that looks like they actually look like a person. Okay. So, if you look at this picture right here, and this is one example of the incomplete dominance. So you have the red horse and the white horse. When they, um, when they cross, you have the horse which are not 100% red and not 100% white. Okay. So you go with this bull and this uh, skull. Okay. Uh, the brown and the white, when they combine together, they will not have an offspring with this completely uh, Blue, uh, sorry. They will not have any offspring that is completely brown or completely white. So you need a combination white and brown. Now we move to lethal genes. Lethal genes are genes or alleles that can cause death to a certain organism if they inherit it. So the gene that is involved is usually an essential gene, and this gene is very important for life. If they are mutated, then you cause a lethal phenotype. If the mutation is caused by a dominant lethal gene, Heterozygote will show the leader phenotype and homozygote is impossible because one is enough to, to create a very uh, serious impact, which is death. So, if the mutation is caused by a recessive little allele, means that the homozygote will have the leader phenotype. Okay? Meaning that if uh, organism only inherits one allele, that one allele will not kill the animal. But if they have two, then, then they will die. So, these little genes, they were found by Lucien Chouinot while studying the inheritance of coat color gene in mice. So, usually, right, when you have a cross between dominant and recessive, usually in the F2 generation, we have three dominant and one recessive. Okay. Fourth generation, all dominant. Second generation, three dominant, one recessive. So this is what we what he has uh, predicted, but somehow he always get two to one, two which is yellow, and one which is black. So, sorry, one which is white. Okay, three. Uh, it's not like three to one. It's two to one, and the yellow one usually they are heterozygotes because they have the gene for white white and yellow okay so now you have the mouse which are having yellow white and white white where are the yellow yellow where are they turns out that um, in 1910, 1910 william ernest castle and cc little they found out that three of the offspring from the crosses died during embryonic development okay so it means that there's something in the gene of the yellow coat if they are doubled it causes them to fail to implant in the uterine lining so they are aborted before they are born okay but if they only have one of this uh y ll it will not have any effect in humans we have the disease called dwarfism or in full name achondroplasia dwarfism it is caused a mutation in the fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 fgfr3 this has been linked to achondroplasia or dwarfism and this gene, only one is needed to cause somebody to become a dwarf. Okay? So if somebody is a dwarf, usually they will have one LL which is normal, one LL which is recessive. Meaning that they can marry and they can have normal children, which is non-dwarf. But, but if there is a child who actually inherited two of these mutations from father and mother, they will be severely affected by achondroplasia and they do not survive pregnancy. So, the chances for getting a normal child will be 1 out of 4. And the chance to get the dwarf child it is 2 out of 4 or 50%. Okay? Right. So, one of the most popular um, uh, achondroplasia dwarfism afflicted person okay, or actors would be Kenny Baker, when it's R2D2 in Star Wars. What is a test cross? Okay, if you look at this picture right here, okay, you know that um, 
Purple is dominant to white. White is usually double recessive. Small p, small p. But for the purple one, you know, you know that there must be at least one dominant allele in there. Big P. But what is its full? What is its full genotype? Is it big P or is it small p? What do you want to do is you cross it with a double recessive or heterohomozygous recessive. Small p, small p. Okay. So you will get one of the two combinations of results. If you get all purple color, okay, meaning that the original plant actually has big P, big P. It is homozygous recessive or double recessive. It will be homozygous dominant, which is both alleles dominant. But if the result turn up with half of it white and half of it purple, meaning that the original uh, purple flower actually has a recessive gene in it. Okay. Pedigree analysis. Pedigree is a diagram of family relationships. We use it to uh, represent people okay, uh, with symbols and lines. Lines is for genetic relationships. So it is easier for us if you use the pedigree analysis to visualize families' relationships, particularly large extensive families. And it's often used to determine the mode of inheritance, dominant recessive, and uh, of or anything about genetic diseases. So in this um, pedigree, the round shape is the female, the square shape is the male. Horizontal lines, so for left to right, it is marriage, okay, mating. The vertical lines are for having children. So, subsequent generations are written underneath the parent generations and the oldest individuals are on the top of the pedigree. So, using pedigree analysis, you can find out autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, x dominant and x recessive. Normal allele is recessive and abnormal allele is dominant. It is for autosomal dominant disorder. Okay, so, what is autosome actually? Autosomes are the chromosomes which are not sexual chromosomes. So it is chromosomes which are not chromosome X or Y. It means that both genders can inherit it. If it is dominant, it means that this um, gene, even if it is just one gene, is able to produce an effect. Effect on, on the person, okay, the mutation. For example, Huntington disease. Okay. You can see. Uh, the people who are afflicted, which is shaded with black, they have big A, small A, big A, small A. Okay, so what happens is that um, people with Huntington disease, the brain will start to degenerate. They will start to forget. They will start to lose their brain function. Okay, if you look at this pedigree uh, table, the one which are big A, big A are no, are no where to be found. Okay, they are not found at all. Presumably, they are dead. So, if there's a 50% chance of this offspring to express gene with at least one affected parent. Autosomal recessive disorder. Okay. This is a disease which are uh, caused by two recessive genes. Okay. Two recessive genes which are homozygous. So, autosomal refers to no such chromosome. It is equally transmitted between sexes. So, it means that if you have a uh, parents which are having a certain gene, right? Uh, if the other parent is not carrying it, you will not get it. You will just be a carrier. The only way that you want to get it will be both of your parents carrying the gene. But the thing is, for this autosomal recessive, if you carry just one gene, it is not enough to create that uh, disease effect. It must have two. So both parents must be having that a gene for you to have that. So from this uh, diagram, you can deduce that this is a family that has autosomal recessive disorder. Why? Because both parents are not affected, but children, uh, they are affected. So parents must be the carriers instead of the sufferers. So two children affected means that the parents are homozygous, big P, small P, big P, small P. Why? Because most, both of these must have the small P, LL. Both of them contribute 
to the each one of the affected child and both must have PLLs because parents are phenotypically they are normal. X-linked recessive disorders. So few phenotypes determined by LS on the differential region of X chromosome are related to size determination. Okay, so it means that we are looking for the uh, chromosome number 45 and 46. Okay, these are the sex chromosome. They determine uh, the gender of the baby. Okay, so if you have XX, it will be a girl. XY will be a baby boy. So X-linked recessive disorders are expressed either homozygous or dominant. So, phenotype with x recessive inheritance typically show the following patterns by degrees. You read there are more males than females. Okay, why? Because females have two X chromosomes. Okay, um, Males only have one. So just XY. If there is any uh, LL or any mutation that is carried by the X chromosome, it will be expressed. Okay, from this pedigree, you can see that this is the royal family of Europe. Okay, a recessive allele causing hemophilia arose in the reproductive cells of Queen Victoria or one of her parents through mutation. And this disease spread to the other royal family by intermarriage. So back then, the princes and princesses from many European countries, they marry each other, spreading the disease. So in this chart, you can see that the people who are um, affected by this disease, they are men. Frederick, Leopold, Maurice, right? So this disease, if you don't know, it is a disease where a person cannot stop bleeding, okay? Because the blood clot is failed, okay? So, uh, mean that they are quite fragile. If they get pricked once or they get cut once, it will not stop bleeding, okay? So, other than that, if you can see in this uh, diagram, there are people who have a dot inside of their symbol. These are the carrier. Okay. Even though they do not have the disease, they actually can pass it down to the, to the offspring. So why is it? Because in their chromosomes for women, they have XX, two Xs. Okay. If there is only one LL for hemophilia, it will not create the effect of hemophilia for the person. So um, the woman, they do just carry the gene and they do not get afflicted by the gene. But for the males, now for the princess, they have X, Y. Since there is no, no other access to um, overpower, you know, to dominate the uh, X that carry the disease, mean that you have X, Y, then the man will have the disease, no matter what. X-linked dominant disorder. So, in this case, same chromosome, the sex chromosome, is just that they are the dominant. Only one is needed for the uh, disease to happen. Okay. So this there's a little bit of um, odd uh, pattern here for extreme dominance order because in here the male passed down their condition to all their daughters but none of their sons. And females who have the disease, they will carry this disease both to the male and female. Okay, why? Because for men you have X and Y, right? Okay. Um, if your ex has the LL, you will give it to your daughter. Why not? Why, why not son? Okay, why not? Because the father gives to the son Y, not X. So the X will be given to the daughter. So if there is any X in dominant disorder on X, all the daughters will have it. Okay. So we can look at this uh, first picture. X linked dominant affected father. Okay, if the father will have the gene where there is a mutation. Okay, so um, combined with the mother genetics, so the mother has XX. Okay, so the daughter will have XX also, but one of the X from the mother, one of the X from the father. And unluckily, the father is affected. So the daughter will accept the gene from the father and from the mother, and they also inherit the disease from the father. Okay. So in this family, the guys, okay, the boys do not have any diseases at all because they get the X which are normal from the mother and Y which are normal from the father. So in another case, what if the mother is affected and not the father? Okay. So the mother will give two Xs. Okay. You have the X chromosome which are normal 
The other chromosomes which are not normal or affected. Okay, so there's actually 50-50 chance for any uh, daughter or son to get the disease. Okay, but for the father, okay, uh, he'll give X chromosome which are okay for the female, you know, for the girls, and Y chromosome which are okay to the to the males. So when the mother alone is in care, her children will inherit this order as follows. 50% of the son will have, and 50% is unaffected. Okay. Children of both genders have an even chance for receiving either of the mother's two chromosomes, which contain the defective gene in question. But when the father alone is carrier of the defective gene, uh, sorry about the disorder, he too will have the disease. So the children will get the disorder such as follows. All daughters will have it. For the sons, none of the sons will have it. Because sons do not receive X chromosome for the father. They receive Y. The one who receives the X chromosome for the father will be the daughter. Application, genetic mapping. So genetic mapping is the creation of genetic map, assigning DNA fragments to chromosomes. So this is also called linkage mapping. It can offer firm evidence that the disease is transmitted from the parent to child. It's linked to one of the more genes. It also provides clues about which chromosome contains the gene and precisely where it lies in the chromosome. Maps have also become useful in guiding scientists to the many genes which are believed to interact to bring about more common disorders like asthma, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and vascular conditions. The mapping using recombination data. So we use recombination to find the recombination within the within the genes. Okay, we want to know where it is. We want to know how far are they from the from the marker or each other. Okay, we use percentage of recombination phenotypes that can be used to map the chromosomes. So what are the common phenotypes? These are offspring which actually have the mix of the phenotype for the mother and the father. Concepts. The farther way two genes are situated, the greater the chance of chromosomes to break in between the genes which the crossover and it join with the chromosome with the homologous chromosome. So the crossover frequency is alpha percent of having the combinant type progeny alpha distance between the two genes. So mean that the more question of frequency, the more recombinants, and also the more far away they are from each other. If you look at this uh, uh, picture on the top right, okay, many crossover. If there is many crossover, the gene A and B are far away enough. Because if they are far away enough, many crossover can happen okay, between A and B. But if they are super super close, probably there will only be a uh, room for just one crossover. So the longer they are from each other, the farther away, the more the crossover will happen. Look at the picture below, uh, the picture which is uh, bottom right. Gene A and B are far apart, the crossover will be more likely. But B and C, they are close together, okay, mean that they is less likely to have crossing over. Look at this equation, okay. Percentage of crossing over or COV, it is equal to total number of recombinant over total number of offspring times 100. So if you have like 100 offspring, 20 recombinants, how many percentage? There is 20% uh, percentage. Meaning that uh, among all of the offspring, um, these two genes somehow recombine. Okay, because there is a crossover in between where they are in the gene, okay, in the chromosome. So one here we call a one, one unit of the chromosome. For example, uh, green pots are dominant to yellow pots. Big G is dominant to small g. Tall plants, big T, are dominant to short plants, small t. A scientist crosses a big G, small g, big T, small t plant with the totally homozygous dominant, sorry, with the totally homozygous recessive plant, small g, small g, small g, small t plant, and the following offspring are produced. If you look at this um, table, the most would be the green and tall, which is, you know, which is just exactly just like the parent, okay? The GGTT, the big G, small D, big D, small T. So they are not recombinant. The second is yellow short. Yellow short, okay, both of these are recessive LL. GG, yellow pot. TT, short. So yellow short are, are exactly just like the parent, so they are not a recombinant. But the other two, green short, 
Okay, green actually belongs to one parent. The short belongs to the other parent. So they are, they are the recombinant. Okay, same goes with the yellow and tall. Yellow is is the recessive allele for the uh, the pea pods, but tall will be the dominant gene for the pea pods. What happens that uh, green, short, yellow, and tall are both not exactly like the parent. They are recombinants. Okay, so we can add that to the to the uh, to the equation. So what is the equation that we want to use? Uh, we use this. Okay, uh, if distance between two genes is too far, more than fifty percent, two crossovers can occur within genes. The two pointed cross cannot be used to map the genes from the chromosome. Okay, and so if the genes are too far, or there are two crossover. It cannot be used anymore because it will be um, inaccurate. So, in leakage mapping, it allows scientists to map distance between genes. So, you use RF, recombinant frequency. Given three genes A, B, and C, recombinant frequency of A and B is 13.2, B, C, 18.5, A, C, 6.4. So, it means that this representative of how many of the offspring are the combination between the mother and father, the maternal and the paternal. Okay. Now, so if you are given a question where you have to draw them in a straight line, look for the largest number first. B C 18.5. Okay. So it is the longest 18.5. So you put B on one end and C on the other end. So it means that A should be in the middle. Okay. So how close to the middle or to the end or to the side that you want A to be. You look at the number again. A, B is 13.2. A, C is 6.4%. So it is much more closer to C compared to B. So uh, after you draw it, it will be like B, A, C. Okay, that's the end of the lecture. I will see you again in the next chapter. Thank you.